Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Getz, and I'm joined by Patrick Smith, Ryan Mark, and Nate Rising, and we are the Cardinal Health Routing Project. So to give you a brief overview of what we were tasked with, our project involved creating a route optimization model to harness data from the Google Maps API in real time. And given several constraints, as you can see below, uh, be able to determine a the most optimal route for Cardinal Health's uh, trucks to take given certain um, distances and uh, constraints, as you can see with continuous updating, order priority, delivery windows, and then delivery time minimizer. And a more higher level process overview. So first we would take the uh, inputs, so all the locations, and then we would pull that data from the Google Distance Matrix API to get the exact location. And then through using our uh, linear program and then also our uh, priorities and time window constraints, we were able to create our output itinerary and map of our uh, route. And so here we can actually see the visual of our result. On the left, you can see the code of the different uh, destinations and it shows which time, the time that uh, the truck will arrive to each location and then depart with a 10 minute drop off time that we put in for each location, which can be changed in our code. And this was give, this was the optimal route given our uh, priorities and constraints. And later on, uh, we will actually give you a demo of how we got to this result. And then on the right, you can see a map of the result that came from this and basically just shows what you see on the left in more of a visual standpoint. And then here's just our project schedule, how we went about this project. We started off just defining what we were trying to do, um, kind of get a grasp of what exactly we were trying to solve. And then we spend a decent amount of our time with the API connection, getting all of the data into Python. And, and then that's when we got into coming up with our uh, basic layers and then um, coming in with that order priority to switch it up based on which ones are more important. And then coming up with our iterative layer. And then finally at the very end, being able to map our final results. The first step of our project uh, was to obtain and to store our data. Um, this is also going to be known as our locations. Uh, each location has 10 attributes that give more information about the location. Uh, these attributes can contain information such as the address, uh, drop off window, or uh, delivery priority. When entering all the locations, uh, actually entry order does not matter. Uh, however, there's one exception to this rule. Uh, the first the first location given uh, must be the depot where the delivery route is going to be begin. Uh, in our case, this depot was Jesse Owens North. On the next slide, we will look at a more concrete example of this data entry. Um, the user gives a list of the depot being first. Yeah, so as you can see at the top first, we'll start with the, the location class. Uh, you just see the 10 attributes that we discussed before. And then if you look down in the get locations list class, um, you see four examples of locations with their respective attributes. As we mentioned a second ago, the first location uh, is our depot or JO North. And the following three, location one, location two, and location three are just three given CVSs within Columbus. Uh, if you were to want to change these locations um, or the desired window or the order priority, uh, this is where that would be done. Yeah, so as, as Ryan and Aaron mentioned earlier, um, our model relies on a connection to the Google Distance Matrix API. And this API essentially provides travel distance and times for given origins and destinations. So it returns the time and minutes um, from one location to another. And so the origins and destinations can either be formatted as a place ID and address or as coordinates. And for our model, we use street addresses um, because this is the easiest to hard code. And then we also use the same inputs as both the origins and the destinations. Um, and then this travel distance and time can be outputted 
um, can be formatted as a JSON or XML. And we, we decided to use JSON because we felt that was easier um, to extract the information from. So in order to make this API connection, several required parameters were needed. Um, this included an API key, which is essentially a random character string that just allows you to access the API and you have to request this key from Google. And then there's also the origins and the destinations. And these are just formatted as giant strings um, with plus signs instead of spaces. And then each different location separated by a vertical bar. And then lastly, we had some additional parameters um, that were optional that our model used. Um, this included mode, which was set to driving, um, departure time, which we set to now. And what this did was just sets the departure time to the current time. And this allowed uh, the API to return travel data that takes the current traffic into account. And then lastly, uh, another parameter was language. And obviously this was set to English. So once we figured out our strategy for data management, um, as far as the locations we were using, and then once we were able to get uh, data from uh, Google to tell us how far in minutes it would take to go from each location to every other location, we were able to come up with a linear program um, to find an optimal route. So this problem is um, well known in the optimization world as the traveling salesperson problem, where you go from one location, one location um, where you visit each location and a set of locations only one time and you make that trip um, into essentially a circle where you um, visit each place once and only once um, and you do that the minimum amount of time or cost. Um, so our strategy for this um, project was to first formulate this basic problem and then on top of that add additional layers of complexity. So factor in order windows, factor in manual order priority, and then finally um, figure, out, figure out a way to do um, on-the-go updating um, or some sort of iterative case. Um, and we did this by um, formulating a linear program and then adding additional constraints for each layer. Um, so in Python, there's a package called CVXPy that we used, and this is for linear optimization. Um, and then one thing that we used in this is a solver called Garobi. So there are different ways um, to solve, I guess, these linear programs um, from the research we did. And this was a solver we came across um, and we used an academic license for this. So if this were to be extended in industry, this would be an additional cost associated with um, our model. Um, so we built out the basic case um, using the constraints on the next slide. Um, so this is a well-known formulation. Essentially, you have um, n number of locations, a cost um, or distance between each location, um, and then a decision variable, xij, which regulates whether or not you go um, from location i to location j. Um, and then this, this last line at the bottom, this ui dummy variable, um, is, a, is a way to eliminate subtours um, and make sure that you visit every, every location in one, one fell swoop. Um, so on the next slide, we can show um, sort of how we coded it and how that matches up to each of those locations. Um, so in the CVXPy package, you declare variables um, and then uh, append constraints to the, um, to the problem um, and then use a solver to solve that. Um, so once we uh, had the basic case uh, ready to go and working, we moved on to the time window constraint. So Essentially, each location we gave some attribute E and L, which was the earliest allowed delivery time, and the latest allowed delivery time. So if you have a business that you can only deliver to between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. for some reason, 10 a.m. would be E and 12 p.m. would be L. And then this variable SI was used to regulate um, essentially when you arrive at each location. And then once we defined those variables, um, we specified that um, for each location, uh, when you arrive to that location, and then you add the time it takes to deliver to that location. So get stuff out of the truck and, and bring it into the, to the business. And then the cost to travel to the next location, that has to be less than um, or equal to the delivery time uh, or the arrival time for that, for that next location. And, and this constraint um, uses a technique called constraint relaxation. Um, we found this in an academic paper 
um, and we were able to replicate it um, in our code on the next slide. Um, so again, this is this is sort of how we matched up. Um, we took all the code we wrote for the original problem, the basic problem, we kept it and just added these additional constraints. Um, we used a similar um, ideology, I guess, going forward into the, the order priority constraints where we just added these additional constraints. Um, so the users enter a list of locations that they want to order to first. Um, this was um, a straightforward way to code this um, given how we did everything else. Uh, we, uh, we sort of ignored the case where um, you want to deliver to someplace last um, or later on. We thought this was like less realistic. Um, so we kept with, with something that we thought was more realistic, which is choosing the first couple locations to visit. Um, and again, we, we say that uh, the first place in that list, you go from the depot to that place. We make that decision variable equal to one. Um, and then for everywhere else in that list, you travel from the place before it in the list to, um, to the location. And so we can see the code for that on the next slide, um, where again, we're just appending more constraints. Um, these, these cases uh, we worked on for about a month. And then for the next couple of weeks, we focused on an iterative case. So for this, um, the idea is that every time you reach a location, you call the Google uh, API again to refresh data. So you get new traffic data to check if a, a new route should be calculated. We thought it was on, originally we thought that maybe it would be good to do this continuously. So while you're sitting in a car, maybe there's a traffic accident um, when you're going somewhere and it, and it reroutes. Um, although this is really expensive to, to do it continuously. So we sort of simplify the case and said, each time you make a stop, uh, reroute. And, and see if, if, the, if the route is the same. Um, so the way we did this, we actually didn't um, create new constraints. Uh, we, we reused new code, but each time a, a location was visited, we took that location out of the list of possible locations to visit. So each time this case is run, it shrinks the problem size until there's only two places left and you go from one to the other. And the way it's currently implemented is that it, it runs all of these back to back to back, but this would be really um, pretty straightforward to extend some sort of control block that says don't rerun it until you have reached the next location. After finding the optimized route uh, between all of our addresses, we wanted some way to visualize the output. Uh, in order to do this, we utilized a plugin for Python called GMAPS. Uh, GMAPS allows us to connect to the Google API to create a map. Uh, however, uh, one of the wrinkles that we encountered uh, was that GMAPS requires locations to be entered as coordinates, not addresses. Uh, we used Google's uh, geocoding API to help us solve this issue. Uh, once we obtained this coordinates list, we used GMAPS to pass the list to um, the Maps JavaScript API. And this gives us an output similar to the one that you can see on the right side of the slide. Um, this is the final step to our problem, and it provides us with a clean and easy to interpret output. Um, and next, actually, we're going to take a step back and examine our package as a whole. Um, so our, our package contains eight different files. Um, four of these files can be run uh, to give a route based on the desired type of route. Um, so as Nate talked about earlier, um, the first one that we have is that base case file. Uh, and then the file, it will in, in short, the file time window case provides an output um, that accounts for delivery time windows. The file time window and order priority case provides an output that does the same functions as time window case, but adds our manual priority option. Uh, and then finally, that iterative case or that iterative file um, accounts for all the functions that we, we just mentioned above um, and also calculates the route after each delivery to optimize um, the route based on you know changes in traffic or, or, or what else uh, could arise. Um, and the other four files that we previously mentioned, uh, they simply just provide functions that all four cases need and use. Um, they're not to be run by the user, uh, but they will be run when they're called on by other sections of the code. Um, so now uh, we plan on giving you a demonstration on how three of these four files run and work. Yeah, so as Ryan was saying, we thought it would be cool to just show a little live demo of three of the different cases. So we'll go ahead and just start with the base basic optimization case. So the top half of this file has code for the linear program. 
And then the bottom half has code to output the uh, route map. So if we go down here to the output, it gives you the delivery start time, so 4.52 p.m. And then it will give you the arrival, drop off, and expected departure for each leg, as well as provide you with um, a map of the optimized route, as you can see here. So then for the time window case, we went ahead and said that the Broad Street CVS, which is currently uh, delivered to at 5.30 p.m. had to be delivered to after 7.15. And then that the 4400 Cleveland CVS, which was delivered to at 8.11 p.m. had to be delivered to before 6.30 p.m. So if we go over to the time window case, it's very similar to the basic case with some additional constraints. And then also as the same code to output the route map. So we go down to the output you can see that now the 4400 Cleveland CVS is delivered to before 630, like we asked. And the Broad Street CVS is now delivered to after 715, um, which was the other time window constraint. So then again, it outputs a map. And this one will, is different than the previous route, obviously, because you have a new route. And then lastly, we can go over to the, to the time window and order priority. So this will keep the previous constraints for the broad CVS and the Cleveland CVS, as well as add that we said we wanted to deliver to the Demoris CVS first and the Lockbourne CVS second. So if we scroll down to the output, you can see um, we delivered to the Demoris CVS first, Lockbourne second, and then it still has us delivering to the Cleveland CVS before 6.30 p.m., as well as delivering to the Broad Street CVS after 8.30 p.m. Once again, it gives us a output map um, of our route. And once again, this is a new map with a new route because of the new constraints. So we'll head on over to the presentation and let Ryan finish it off. After looking at our code and, and seeing our several outputs, um, honestly, we couldn't couldn't help but be proud with the work that we've uh, accomplished. Um, however, though, with with every project that there is, um, there were some inefficiencies that we had along the way and some things that we would probably change as a group uh, if we had to redo the project. And we've outlined them here on this slide. Uh, first, if we could reallocate our time, we would look deeper into GMAPs um, simply because this package contains some functionality that would have assisted us in verifying our code uh, much earlier on in the process. Um, second, early in our testing process, we encountered some issues when we used a large number of inputs. Um, this issue took us admittedly longer than we had anticipated to clean up. So if we uh, if we could have done this over again, we would have liked to begin testing uh, large number of tests or a large number of locations much sooner. Next, when it came to our scheduling, we spent a little bit of extra time setting up main objectives and we didn't um, necessarily prioritize itemizing these objectives so we could tackle specific ideas. Um, simply put, we would just begin sooner uh, on some of the smaller uh, tasks that we had and this will allow us to test our entire program full more uh, sooner and uh, to perfect each case. Finally, you know, we, we, uh, we encountered the problem that just seems like every program team or programmer seems to have in some, some capacity, uh, the ability to share code and keep us all on the same page. Um, we waited on this a little bit and maybe if we had addressed this issue sooner and set up some guidelines on it much earlier, we could have reached out to one of our sponsors and found a way to, uh, you know, share co codes more seamlessly and, and just avoid this common headache. Before we sign off, though, we wanted to thank our sponsors at Cardinal Health, as well as Professor, Gre Professor Greco, for being a valuable resource throughout the entire project. Uh, each one of us enjoyed working on this project, and we believe that we all learned something from each other, as well as how to efficiently work as part of a project group. If you have any questions on our presentation, they can be emailed to us at any one of our emails that were provided on the first slide, and thank you once again.